All right, everybody, we wrapped up another Friday here at RP. Uh, I want to talk through uh, the procedure that we had today, uh, which is uh, a little bit of an interesting case just in how I uh, kind of look at these types of patients. So uh, today we did a PRP procedure for the low back uh, on the left side, the right hip, sorry, not the right hip, the right knee, and then also the right ankle. Now, uh, first let's talk about the low back. So this is our third injection on this patient for her, her low back pain. Each injection has got her closer towards being pain-free, which is obviously what we are, are looking for. And each time we have kind of refined what we're doing a little bit in order to further tweak. And so the very first time we treated her low back, we actually just treated her sacroiliac joint uh, and the supporting ligaments around that because it appeared that most of her pain was coming from that. That resolved quite a bit of her pain, but then her pain kind of changed a little bit. And so a new layer came out. So then on our second procedure, we ended up actually treating the iliolumbar ligament, which is a common ligament uh, that can cause pain in the lower back, basically attaches the ilium, so your kind of hip pelvis bone, to the actual spine, so hence the iliolumbar ligament. Um, we also treated the facet joints, uh, L2-3 through L5-S1 on both sides at that time. Uh, and then we also did some subcutaneous perineural injections just to treat the overlying uh, subcutaneous nerves. Again, this is probably about four, four months ago, and, and she did well with that, and she saw pretty significant improvements. Uh, and it was probably in the last uh, two or three weeks she has started to notice a slight plateau in that, and so she wanted to uh, retreat again. And so this time, based on our physical exam, we decided just to treat the left uh, facet joints because her right facet joints clinically are not causing her any issues. She doesn't have any right-sided low back pain anymore. No issues with turning and looking over the right side. No, you know, extension rotation would cause pain on the right side. It was on the left side. So we treated L2 through L2-3 through L5-S1 facets on that left side um, and really focusing on getting good intraarticular as well as the capsule round, which is really, really important to treat both of those structures. So we did that. We also, tr again, treated the iliolumbar ligament uh, at both of its attachments on L4 and L5, and then also where that attaches onto the anterior brim of the ilium. Um, and then we did uh, two things that we haven't done in here yet, although we did more superficial nerve stuff before. We ended up doing some deeper nerve stuff. So we did a lumbar erector spine, a plain hydrodissection. So again, I know I've talked about this before, but we find the transverse process and we have the erector spinae group that is on top of it. Take our little, our little model here, okay? So we find our, our transverse process here, and then we are going to take our needle and basically advance our needle onto the transverse process. That tr this needle is then going to lie underneath the actual uh, erector spinae group. And when we inject the fluid there, that fluid is going to travel up and down that uh, the fascial layer of the erector spinae group, and it's going to bathe the dorsal root ganglia. It's going to bathe these smaller cutaneous nerves that are originating down from the actual spinal canal, and that's going to give uh, a really great pain relief for the medial and lateral cutaneous branches of the dorsal rami. Now, if you are up to snuff on your anatomy, you'll know that the lateral cutaneous branch of the dorsal rami in the lumbar region is actually the superior clunial nerves. So because she is having pain from that area as well, we also did uh, a nerve hydrodissection for two, two of her branches that were inflamed of the superior clunial nerve. So under ultrasound guidance, we find the nerve, we palpate, we make sure that's her spot of pain, and then we advance the needle up to that nerve, inject fluid around that nerve to help manually decompress it, also to provide some nutrition to it, right? We're helping to bring new blood flow to that area. We actually have some uh, growth factors. We have some dextrose in our solution, and so we're trying to promote the healing of this nerve. And so uh, that was our approach today for uh, the low back.